to welcome uh, Dr. Alafia Kambati, Dr. Buranuddin, Dr. Nishreen, who are there on this group. Welcome you all. This is Anjumane Abdullah Kambat Trust, first initiative of sharing knowledge and uh, different manifestations. We had taken diabetes as a, pro uh, as a problem this time, and we are going to be talking how do you tackle the diabetic problems in dental patients. Dr. Alafia Kambati uh, is an oral pathologist. She is a professor and head of the dental department at Kargar, examiner in the Nasik University. She has done a lot of presentations, and her area of interest is tobacco de addiction and oral precancer and cancer prevention. We also have a very eminent uh, speaker with us, Dr. Buranuddin Kambati, who is a consultant oral and maxillofacial surgeon. He is uh, practicing in the suburbs from Andheri to Bandra and also comes down to South Bombay. He is at the Marol uh, Diagnostic Center where he is doing his major work. His area of interest is research. He does a lot of presentations. He loves uh, reading and outdoor activities and sport. We welcome both of you and uh, over to you, Dr. Buranuddin, please. Yes, uh, hello everyone. So as Dr. Mustafa Barai has given my introduction. So as an oral and maxillofacial surgeon, I encounter a lot of patients who are having diabetes and they show a lot of oral manifestations as in certain signs and symptoms in the oral cavity seen typically in diabetic patients. So I'll be discussing that uh, in my presentation and how to uh, do dental management of such patients if they come to a dentist. So I'll be discussing that as well. So coming to PD, so I have made this chart tentatively in which uh, what are the different uh, manifestations or which are the different clinical signs which can, which, which can be seen in a typical diabetic patients starting from periodontal disease that is uh, in labrum it is nothing but your gum diseases. So in a diabetic patient, the pathogenesis, as we said, there is decreased periodontal regenerative capacity due to which your gums are affected. So for such patients, we usually uh, do dietary uh, modifications and certain periodontal therapy on a monthly basis. Then there is dry mouth or xerostomia. The main reason is due to reduced salivary flow as a result of polyuria. As we all know, that is an in increased uh, frequency to micturate or to urinate in diabetic patients. So in such patients, there is reduced salivary flow. So again, uh, again, dr dry mouth is a concern. So proper control of diabetes and dental hygiene is a must to prevent dry mouth. Then coming to root caries. Caries is nothing but cavity in layman's term. So basically, due to your uh, dry mouth and periodontal disease, which acts as a precipitating factor for cavity to go into your tooth. So basically, again, use of certain fluoridated toothpaste and restorative treatments, they are acceptable. Then one more thing is, uh, one important thing is oral candidiasis. Now, candidiasis, I don't know whether people know or not, but this is a, basically a fungal infection. So there are white patches which are seen in your mouth. The typical curdling of milk is the clinical sign which we can see. So again, main causes is decreased salivary flow and impaired immune system because of diabetes. So again, antifungal treatment is necessary or advocated for candidiasis. Then comes pulp necrosis and periodontal abscess. Obviously, diabetes patients have an increased tendency to localize infection. Same goes for any other infection or tooth infection. So for treatment, endodontic treatment, that is a routine uh, root canal treatment is uh, advocated. And yes, since we all know diabetes is uh, related to impaired wound healing. That is, wound doesn't heal as uh, compared to other individuals. They don't heal faster. So again, prevention of uh, diabetic, that is proper diabetes control and antibiotic uh, coverage is important. So I have... Uh, uh, put some photos. This is a basically a X-ray of an old individual in which you can see uh, literally teeth are floating. Teeth are floating in the oral cavity, which is uh, seen in the X-ray, which suggests that the gum support has been lost. So eventually your tooth will become loose and they will shed off. Then uh, second is candidiasis, which I have discussed. That is white white patches are seen in the oral cavity, which is a fungal infection. 
so again a proper uh, anti fungal regimen is uh, advocated then mucormycosis we have heard a lot about mucormycosis during this uh, covid pandemic again it's a very deadly fungal infection which usually starts in the oral cavity and if not control it can uh, spread to the orbit that is the eyes so if you see a small patch or a small bony exposure in your oral cavity one can never rule out uh, mucormycosis again a good fungal anti fungal regimen is uh, advocated for this then coming to xerostoma which we have uh, already discussed that is your dry mouth so if your mouth remains dry then hundred of diseases can enter through it so basically again silogogs uh, or salivary substitutes are necessary to maintain that uh, salivary flow in your mouth then this is gingival overgrowth as i said due to excessive uh, or impaired immune function the leukocyte infiltration towards your gingiva it swells basically the gingiva swells so again a good periodontal treatment that is your routine cleaning and checking up your teeth is important so if a uh, patient or diabetic patient if it comes to your clinic or if any one of you has diabetes and you go to your dentist these are the things which you would probably see or your dentist will see first the whatever medication or diabetic uh, medication or taking and their severity and control of the diabetes that is your dentist or physician is prescribing that is some people may be taking insulin some people may be taking oral drugs hypoglycemics so all these things are important because on a dental chair a patient can get a hypoglycemic attack so basically your history and severity is important so second is the dentist or the physician should be aware of the patient's recent glycolated hemoglobin value so if uh, if any dental procedure if you have been prescribed by your dentist then it is necessary that a recent a uh, diabetic blood test that is hb1c or glycosylated hemoglobin you should be doing it and going to your dentist for the procedure so hb1c values this is a rough estimate that uh, less than 8% they indicate good control and greater than 10% it indicates poor control so first you have to control your diabetes and then go for your routine dental checkup when the level of control diabetes is non known then you have to consult your physician and treatment should just be lim limited to palliation then in patients who have good glycemic control that is your uh, hemo glycosylated hemoglobin less than 6 uh, then you must ensure that you take that particular medication in the morning before you visit your dentist then patients receiving good medical management without any serious complications such as renal diseases hypertension or coronary arthrosclerotic uh, uh, sorry arthrosclerotic disease can receive any indicated dental treatment so basically if your diabetic management or diabetic control is good any dental treatment is possible then coming to the choice of local anesthetic uh, there is as such no harm in a diabetic patient any type of local anesthetic give, can be given local anesthesia is nothing but the medicine or the injection which is given to you to numb your tooth and uh, if you are going to your dentist usually morning appointment appointments are more uh, preferred because of optimum glucose level and low insulin activity so appointment should be if you go to your dentist then appointment should be usually of a short duration around 30 to 45 minutes a source of glucose such as orange juice must be available in the dental office so again by chance god forbid if you get a hypoglycemic attack then you should be carrying some uh, glucose related stuff or biscuits which can give you or it is might have something in his clinic prophylactic antibiotics for such patients which uh, take high doses of insulin and other oral hypoglycemics are a must because such diabetic patients are prone to infection of any kind so basically antibiotic coverage that is pre uh, before the dental treatment and after the dental treatment is necessary so coming to my part if i want to do a little surgery be it anything from the mouth or be it anything from the jaws it is the best to do surgery when blood sugar uh, blood sugar levels are within optimal normal range i usually prefer less than 6 uh, hb a1c level if it is less than 6% then i consider to for uh, undertaking any surgery be it any minor surgery or weight may so again anxiety reduction protocol has to be maintained while doing the procedure what now what do you mean by anxiety reduction protocol if the patient comes to a dentist the sight of 
injection can make him anxious so obviously his blood pressure and everything is going to rise up so that is stress reduction protocol has to be taking short appointment duration morning appointment all these things comes into anxiety reduction protocol emotional stresses and painful conditions increase the amount of cortisol and epinephrine which again induce to hypoglycemia again indirectly pointing to anxiety reduction protocols so another option is if the patient is highly anxious or anticipated to be anxious then again sedation can be considered that is the patient uh, can be given uh, sedatives during dental procedures we all know about the option of nitrous oxide uh, so we can give that pain during procedures can be avoided by potent anesthesia if the entire dental procedure is pain free the patient won't complain and hence the patient, uh, the procedure will be successful so a, a proper administration of local anesthesia so i have uh, again summarized so what are the potential uh, complication which can arise in a diabetic patient that is on the dental chair or after the procedure has been done and how do we manage it the first is hypoglycemia if you take uh, anti uh, oral hypoglycemic drugs or insulin your bp is going to, your uh, blood glucose levels are going to go down so in order to be uh, have optimum glucose levels you should be well fed that is in the morning you should have your proper breakfast you should have your proper meals so that your blood glucose level remains constant in spite of after taking medicines then again infection and wound healing again it can be addressed to proper antibiotics salivary gland dysfunction that is your dry mouth saliva substitutes so basically a diabetic patient cannot be uh, coming to a dentist or dental chair cannot be neglected as like a normal patient anything can be manifested on a dental emergency like uh, hypoglycemia the patient can go to a hypoglycemic shock so such things have to be kept in mind and yes uh, diabetic patients are a challenge to in management for any dental procedure be it a small uh, cleaning procedure or be a tooth extraction thank you a uh, wonderful uh, dr buranudin was a very nice summarize very crisp and clear dr alafia would you like to take over from here now with uh, colgate uh, which has come up with a new toothpaste which contains the neem and other uh, agents like jamun and all which help in diabetic care so regular tooth brushing with maybe these anti diabetic toothpastes regular uh, use of mouthwashes flossing of the teeth and maintaining oral hygiene is mandatory regular visits to dentists are mandatory and uh, of course uh, preventing of um, dryness of the mouth with use of salivary substitutes is mandatory to prevent any over or super infection like a fungal infection so uh, salivary substitutes and prevention of dry mouth is uh, extremely important that would even reduce the incidence of caries is uh, when the salivary flow is reduced the cleansing action of saliva is reduced and that could uh, make the patient more prone to caries which we see the incidence of caries is always high in uh, cases of diabetics you know so to in 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 short uh... to summarize a diabetic patient visiting a dental person they need to understand three very important things one thing is you make your sugars very well under control because you may be prone to infection and all the problems identify and visit your dentist regularly you know don't don't wait for problems to arise and then so you have your regular six monthly checkups which is very very uh, important and if you're going for any treatment as dr buranudin has said you know you will have to do it early in the morning do it first thing in the morning you may avoid to take your medications I'll take your medications along with you because you may land up into hypoglycemia take a little bit of uh, juices or sweets with you finish your treatment have a treatment shot and then you can take your injections or this thing and have your regular breakfast and by 9 9:30 10 10, you can go back home so that was a wonderful very very important tips and important uh, ways very good you've covered all the diseases which are more common kanjuman abdullah sambatras to give us this platform to share thank you and thank you for your valuable yes, time you. dr bunanadin dr alafia dr